feel like it should be in an elevator. I know, you're right. There's that kind of music. Never thought of that. Actually, I did. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the January 25th edition of Topic Time with Harrison Young here in the year 2018. And uh, I got to say, we got a great guest tonight. Uh, it's, the weather's not bad out there. It's a little, you know, I always like to mention that. It's a little semi mild, I guess you could say. It's no like snow. It's sun out there. Yeah, I, I like it. I like it. But uh, before, this is uh, Stanton Barker. He's an actor. He's a, uh, a musician. He's brought his, his actual wish, him, to play on the show with us. But before I even you know, begin talking to him, I just want to mention to everybody that, believe it or not, this is the 51st anniversary of my TV debut. It was 51 years ago tonight. 51 years. Wednesday, January 25th, 1967, as a second grader in Brockton, where I live, uh, at seven years old, I got to appear live on the Bozo Show, which used to be aired every afternoon, Monday through Friday, at the uh, Morrissey Boulevard station of Channel 5, which was there at the time before they moved to Needham in 1972. So quite a milestone, I would say, and certainly worth mentioning. But fast forward to 51 years later, and we have topic time tonight. Look how far I've come with that. So now, Stanton Barker, thank you for coming in. I can't wait to discuss your projects, and we got some highlights of, of what he's done as well to talk about. Well, thanks for having me. Okay, well... So you have you made a list of, of projects here, but let's. I want to talk about you first. You are uh, you, you're a, you were born and raised in the lovely Granite State of New Hampshire. Uh, I grew up in Connecticut, actually. Oh, really? New England, then a beautiful, lovely, yeah, yeah. A, a Yankee in, in, in King Arthur's Court. Yeah, largely <laughs> Riverside, but uh, as I said, my mom got married uh, in my sophomore year, and I stopped going home. What high school? You, uh, no college. She got remarried. Okay, I guess that might have something to do with the person she remarried. You weren't no, no, no. Uh, he's a wonderful guy. I oh. just, you know, didn't want to be that third wheel in, you know, in the house. Yeah, you know. I would understand that too. I, w I have to say, if, if my family, I know, I know, we're getting a little, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, a little down on the family situation. But if my either of my parents, and by the way, tomorrow is my parents' 61st wedding anniversary. I have to mention that too. But if either of them married someone else, I probably wouldn't want to be around either, either you know, them you and the other partner. Just gotta give them the honeymoon, you know. Right. Just, and and it was time. It was time, you know. And I I fell in love with New Hampshire, so New Hampshire's uh, beautiful. Well, speaking of college, where did you go to college? Uh, New England College in Henniker. Only Henniker on earth. Henniker, New Hampshire. Yep. Okay. And what did you major in? Uh, business administration. Okay. Uh, business administration, finance, broadcasting. And you've writing. done it all. Now you, you made, yeah, you gave me a list of stuff. You've done, you've done broadcasting. You've done model. You said you've done modeling too, right? Uh, in, I've, in I've been in front of the camera, but you know, I'm, oh. a, I'm a Renaissance stand. Okay. All right. <laughs> we. I, I sort of. I should know what that means, but I, but if I'm un, not familiar with something, I ask, what does that mean exactly? And, like a Renaissance uh, man, except Stan. Yeah, I, okay. I like to do lots of things. You know, life less ordinary. Keep it interesting. Of course. Uh, you know, and. So far, so good. You know, here I found myself on topic time. Exactly. So. You, you can't you can't do better than that. <laughs> and uh, and and by the way, you know, you've told me you've got quite you got a history of acting. Well, how'd you, now how did you get into that? I and mean, how long have you been doing it? You you got a, uh, what's the timeline on your acting? The acting was was uh, a strange thing okay. where I was doing uh, location sound on a film and there were parts that major didn't, film no it's a short film okay but there were parts that didn't require sound and the um set design girls were like oh we need to find somebody who looks like a, a tweaked out vietnam guy oh you kind of do tie-dye and and all that and right. so they pointed to me and next thing i know I'm, I'm in front of the camera channeling my best gilda radner oh there you go um gilda and, radner never mind Is that yeah what you it was more okay. like Oh, okay, mute Gilda Radner. Yeah. Oh, I get you. So I, 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 it's one of the many films that I've worked on that I have no idea what happened to it. It's, well, it's floating around. You remember around the name of the film? And you remember how? What year was ba it? Banaszewski. Banaszewski, 2012. Banazoo, was it in 2012 that you did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. So basically, it's been six years since you really, you, you really broke it into yeah, the it's, acting. It's world. almost done with post production right now. <laughs> But it's just a short film, and it's taken six years. To yeah, I don't, oh, like I, I said, know, I think it went to Netflix. Projects go in the back burner, and sometimes that happens. And you know, when things come up with people that produce films, other projects, yeah. and you know, you know, someday you, you'll see yourself in it, and you'll it'll you'll be able to add it to your list here. Well, it's already on your list, but you'll be able to add it to your flash drive, which you brought in so nonchalantly, and that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, every now and then I'll check my IMDb database, and I'll be like. 
No, you mentioned. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I remember that. You've yeah. got a great, you've got a great history on IMDb, and and after tonight, you're going to have your topic time appearance on it as well. Yeah. Now you mentioned that you worked with one of the uh, stars of the King King of Queens, uh, Kevin. What's his Valentine? Kevin. Gary, Kevin, Gary Valentine. Gary Valentine, who's Kevin James's cousin. Correct. Okay, yeah. and he and I he, he he actually looks like a guy I went to school with named Mike Bandis. He looks exactly like him. You call him Smedley. Yeah, yeah. He it was with a uh, Justin McKinney was in it. Okay. And Lenny Clark. Oh, Lenny, you gotta get. Have you are you friendly friendly with Lenny? Because I'm trying to get him on the show for two years. Yeah, yeah. I want to know his diet, man. He is ripped now. He is looking really good. Well, I am too. I used to be a porker as well. But 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 enough. I digress. But go on. So what film was this? Um, they were four shorts that were designed to be a um, sort of a teaser. Okay. Uh, Justin McKinney wrote it. It's about a fictitious volunteer fire department in Effing Woods, New Hampshire. Okay. Well, as opposed to Epping, New Hampshire, which is kind of uh, the word is a, is a play on Epping, but Epping instead. We Correct. Know what that Correct. means, obviously. Cool. Yeah. And okay. So we did four of them. Um, there was one part. Where you remember it was, who produced it? Uh, Justin and and Mark Dole uh, okay. from Hashling Studios, I believe, was oh. doing the post production. I mean, is, is that that's New Hampshire? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how did you get, how did they get Gary Valentine up there? That's awesome. Uh, Justin, well, Justin connections. Wow. Yeah. That's I mean, cool. he lives like five miles down the road from me. So. Oh, you still see him now? Oh yeah, it does. Gary yeah. Valentine. No, no, no. Oh, Justin. Justin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Gary Valentine, he must live on the West Coast. Um, it, it's possible. Okay. I, you know, I don't keep in touch with him as much as I do uh, Lenny because he's, you know, sort of Boston based. Right. And, um, okay. And then Justin because I see him at the coffee shop. Which Newmark coffee shop? The one you go to in, uh, in Newmarket, right? Newmarket, New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, it must be great. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. where they? Isn't that where they usually hold the first Democratic primary every election year? Something one of those uh, little. I think that's, oh, that's, that's something up north. Notch, New Hampshire. It's like Bethlehem or something like that. It's, it's up north. Okay. Yeah. It's it's a little tiny. Tiny town with like 500 people. Okay. In it. So what? All right. So what year did you do this film with with Lenny and, and Gary Valentine? How long ago? Well, must have been within the last couple of years. I'm thinking. You got your list right here. That was uh, 2010, 2011. Well, that was even before that. You, be, you broke in as as Gilda Rat and his double. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I, I got to tell you, it was it was a couple days, and it was one of some of the most fun uh, I've I've had on a set. It was you know very professional. Um, everybody knew what they were doing. Yeah, um, as it should be. Okay. And, uh, but you I, have yeah, that's cool. Yeah, a lot of the times the behind the scenes footage is is a lot funnier than um, you know what really goes on. Well, that's why they do. That's probably why they do blooper reels. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I, got, don't, I got caught on camera. Personally speaking for myself, I'm not I'm not a blooper fan. I like it. I, I like. Well-written material, played to the hilt, and ad-libbed if it's done well. Yeah, okay. yeah, well, you know, the, the actress, one of the actresses in, I think, the second episode um, went off script after, like, the third take. Okay. And she, she basically dropped an F-bomb, which wasn't in the script, and everybody was, like, frozen. Okay. Waiting for the director to yell cut. And then when he yelled cut, we just, everybody fell to the ground. It was, and that's the, that's the cut they ended up using. Who is this actress? We've got to get her on the show. Um, she, she lives uh, south, uh, just uh, east of Boston. Um, Do you remember her name? Uh, Maybe it, I've had it'll, her it'll come to me. I'm having a senior moment right now. Okay. But, um, well, that's okay. Well, she'll see the show, and if she wants to appear, she'll come on. Yeah. That's yeah. how this works, baby. But we network. Yeah, she dialed it minute. in. Yeah, she was, she was great. Yeah, I'm sure she, I like it. She, I bet she was pretty good looking, too. It's always it's always better when good looking girls drop that bombs when they're not so good looking girls. It do was it. just you I know, know maybe right that, maybe that's stuff, being a stereotypical it, and you know because you, you, you hear the lines three four times and right. you're like you know she's just going to play it a little bit differently the next time. Okay. But she played it a lot differently the next time. So. All right. Well, let's tell you what we do. Let's you get you brought your act with you. You get tired. Web. Be, Web. Jessica Web. Jessica Web. I love the name. See, I told you I'd Woo! remember it. Good <laughs> job. High five. Okay. So let's go over all your projects here, and, and, and we're going to edit them into the show so people can see them, all the ones that we can do. Memories. And then we're going to, then we're going to talk a little about you know, what you're doing now, and then and you, if you want to, you, and then you can play a little music if you like. That's why you brought your guitar with you. So It goes oh, with me. Exactly. Yeah. So, wait, wait, do uh, you want to start like way back here? At, sure. I mean, that wasn't even the first one. We go back uh, 2000, 2006. Wow, so you've actually been doing this for 12 years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
Endurance Challenge, Mordred's Isle, uh, was an animation that um, animation? Hatchling Studios did. Billy West was one of Billy the... Billy West, the WBCN guy? Yeah, he, oh, was, he was one of the characters. Gotta actors. get him on the show. And I was uh, the uh, shark. I was a razor shark. I played the voice of a razor shark. Okay. And, um, and I was shilling... What's a razor shark? I have uh, to it's, ask. It's a, a shark where the blades... I know what a lone the shark fin is. is like a... a oh. Like a... Like a blade. Okay. You know, like you get on a table saw. Okay, I get you. I think they're made up. Anyway, wow. um, and I was I was selling Stan's barbecue sauce. I, I read the script and I thought it was just, you know, oh, we're just doing it as a treatment. Well, we're did you, change the Stan's barbecue, barbecue sauce? sauce? Did you create that? It's you, your Stan. I, I thought it was a test and they ended up using it. So, um. so, so, so this was sort of like a, a film slash TV ad? For Stan's barbecue sauce. It was part. Of, it was part of the, the script. Um, oh, okay. It, it was based loosely on um, the the TV show Sur Survivor. So, but it was animated, and uh, instead of like people going through challenges, they actually get killed on the way there. Well, it's okay if it's animated because when in animate in animation, usually that even you know the, like Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry's are, are always killing each other, and then two minutes later, they're back at back at their antics, coming you know, know, trying know. to do it again. One of my favorites from. Uh, I know. Childhood. I used to watch it too. Watch them. Uh, so all right, well let's go on. What else you got there? Oh, uh, let's see. That was that was that was a fun one. Um, They're all fun. Ran ones. Two two thousand six. In the cards was my first forty eight hour film project. Okay. And it was with Mark Dole from Hatchling Studios. Okay. And um, his is that, wife, is that located Wanda. in Manchester, New Hampshire? It was in Portsmouth. Portsmouth. Okay, on the seacoast. And we had put together an entire cast and crew. Yep. Using Craigslist, okay, in New York City. Wow, you, you and so then you got we left at Craig... two o'clock in the morning. Wow, cool. And we pulled it off. Amazing, you know. And they say Craigslist is uh, is hazardous to your health, but it worked for you guys. It was it was a while ago, you know. Like I said, two thousand eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it was that in itself. I did the behind the scenes uh, footage as well as sound, um, and it, it, nobody killed each other. At the end of it. Well, what's funny? What's funny about that? If nobody kills each other, isn't it better yeah. if they do? Okay, well, it's oh, nice I, to have a I, diversity. Yeah. I did original music it's, for that as it's, well. It's better in animation. But now, the second film wasn't animated, right? No, this was live in action. The okay. Um, uh, basically, about a, a, a woman who had this criteria for dating people, and she would read cards. And, oh, okay. And you know, people would oh. be like, "Oh, I like shaved chocolate, Tahitian chocolate, but it was some rose hips on the side there, but not shaved too thin." Okay. And it, he was too particular, so he he was out. Stuff like that. Cool. You know. You remember who played the woman? That. Oh, um, um, she married uh, a friend of mine, Peter, but. Um, couldn't have been that good a friend if you can't remember her name. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. That's it'll, okay. Like I said, it'll come to it'll me. It'll come to you? Okay. I didn't take the, that throw of notes, but... Um, All right, no problem. Sellers. Well, Stephanie Sellers. Oh, okay. Well, any relation to Peter? Right. That's what we were Snake thinking. Snake actor. <laughs> All right, yeah. what else you got here? And her husband's literally a, a professional clown with the uh, Big Apple Serpent Circus. Cool. Um, so then we went to uh, The Stag Hunt, which was um, a Freddy Catalfo film, okay. uh, uh, Alfred Thomas Catalfo. Okay. Um, <coughs> and we were shooting long days. One of the days, I think, went a solid 20 hours. Wow. Um, that was, and I remember it was the day before the Super Bowl, and I'm driving home at like 6 in the morning. Were and the Patriots in it? Like they are now? Again? Um, yeah, I think so. Wow. But yeah, that was a long, long shoot. Um, it was a concept film, as a lot of the Freddy films are, okay. where uh, somebody gets a uh, <coughs> something put a drop in their eye, right. and it enables them to see the probability and statistics of the outcome of some particular thing above somebody else's head. That is very clever. So very clever. Um, yeah. So if there was going to be a shootout, you know, it would be like you know, eighty twenty chance one guy's an assassin, Freddy's with a you know, shaken with a gun, and wow. all of a sudden it gets to fifty fifty, the guns go off and. It sounds like it sounds kind of like a uh, like like an enticing sci-fi tale a little bit. Right, right. Chase Bailey was in it as well. Okay. Um, he's a he's a Fort Smith uh, icon. I know friend who he of is. Mine. Of yeah. him. Okay. Super guy. Right, right. Um, and Ever done any work with David Affleck? No. You know who he is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was a guest a few years ago. Oh no, kidding. Yeah, he just did a really cool commercial for some. Uh, for some phone software, it was a long one. It was like a, like a, like ten minutes almost, like an infomercial. We just posted it yesterday. Yeah, I want that gig. All right, well, you'll get it. It's what topic <laughs> time is for. But go on. Uh, so yeah, um, Dark Scribbles was another one. Okay, um, what was that? That was by 
um, uh, a friend of mine, and it, like I said, the name will come to me. Um, he, he, he looks a lot like Johnny Depp. Everybody mistakes him for Johnny Depp, but okay. he's not. But, Reality um, Bites? It was uh, a, a film, and Jessica was in that as well. Okay. Um, Don't forget, Johnny Depp played Whitey Bulger, too. She, um, Maybe it was the real Whitey Bulger. She, she had, uh, it was originally called Dyslexic Psychic. Okay. And she would see people, uh, you know, uh, people's truths. Okay. But uh, what she didn't realize is that one of the truths was that her, her husband was cheating on her. Oh, that's a, those are the best truths of all. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, they're, you know, they're, they're, fun to, they're fun to watch, but you know, to hear about, at least in a film. But go on. Michael Venn was the uh, writer-producer of that. Okay. See how my brain works? Backwards. That's fine, <laughs> as long as it works. Um, Tuesday morning. What was that? Oh, that was a short for... Um, it loosely based on uh, two women who meet on the uh, 80... Seventh floor of the World Trade Centers on 9/11. Wow! Oh and, my goodness! Uh, it, I thought it was very well treated. We didn't ha end it with you know the sound of jets or anything. We just left it as you know what's about. You know to what's happen. about to happen. And wow! They, I mean, it was just based on a true story. I, I'm guessing. No, it was it was written. Um, I think it was written by Lars Trodson, who's running a newspaper out of uh, Block Island. Right okay. Now. Rhode um, Island. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And um, and it was. It was. It, um, it was one of those could have been, could have been deals. And, and, and true yeah. to form, you know, when they yeah. say, "Hey, we're going to shoot a film," and the sound guy, you know, me, is just like, "Oh, great! I hope it's in a place like this, you know, which has a great, great sound." And a green screen too. They shot it in a, a hallway with steel stairs and concrete walls. Of course, that, well, the that's what. Yeah. Absolute worst. I mean, quite frankly, it, it sounds like a, a very powerful film, and uh, albeit disturbing, nevertheless, but still different. And, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, it, interesting and original. It was all dialogue driven, which you know I appreciate. Oh um, yeah. There's not an, enough of that stuff out there. You know, everything's all flash, boom, bang, and you know. Right. If you can get something that's well written and cleverly written, um, yeah. The 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 action happens in your mind, which I, I think there needs to be more of. Okay. Um, Bighorn. Okay. Easily the uh, the largest, most complicated set I was on. That's another. Uh, Alfred Thomas Catalfo film, and um, it has to do with <clears throat> Adam Vinatieri. Do you remember him? Oh, yes, I do. Yes. Three Super Bowl wins yep. with his foot. Yep. Well, his great, 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 great grandfather was invented, invented the coronet or, player or coronet, in okay. Custer's, Custer's okay, that's um, right. band. Okay. And... Um, this tells the story of, uh, well, it runs two parallel li uh, lines, but it tells the story of what if he had taken his band into battle and the band was killed, then Adam Vinatieri would not have been born. Have been born. And the Patriots probably would not have won those Super Bowls. Right, so that's the parallel universe. So Crazy there's, stuff. there's this coronet, yep. and the Lakota Indians end up putting the spirit of Custer in there, and later on, um, uh, Fritz Weatherby is in this. Oh, I know who he is. Yep. Yeah, he's a the storyteller at, WM, at WNDS. He was. Yep. Well, he's at MUR. MUR. Does, okay. Does, um, um, Chronicle. Love to have my show on MUR. That would be killer. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a hilarious uh, storyteller. Yeah, I've uh, seen some of his work. It's great on YouTube and stuff. So there were some special effects in this. You know, yep. uh, eventually uh, this guy buys the coronet. Says okay. I have a thing for old brass and and. Says one thing. Uh, Fritz says one thing you cannot do yeah. is play Gary Owen. Gary Owen. Is, it was on Laughing. No, Gary Owen. It was a, a song that used to be uh, an Irish drinking song. Oh, okay. But they used to play it a lot when I'm they not were Irish, so and I don't drink, but I, I understand. Okay. Because it would release the spirit of of uh, Custer. Oh, and amazing. So uh, you know, it's it's out there somewhere. This this film. It's okay. actually it's on uh, Vimeo. Okay, Vimeo is good. Do, Vimeo is a very large. Um, the con uh, big the content horn, of films. one word, um, Alfred Thomas Catelfo, and that that should show up. Cool. You know, that was oh first day of shooting. Yeah. We decided to have all the horses and the cavalry and all the gear. You know, nothing like you know ramping up to the big shoot. We okay. did that day one. All right. Well, I hope no animals were harmed in the making of the film. I'm a big animal no, rights activist. No. I did rip my pants though. Oh I, well. There's a whole awful lot of pictures. Glad, of I, me. glad I missed that one, but it's yeah. funny. Lots of gaff tape on on the back of my pants. Okay. People thought that was like you know, hey, take a picture of Stan's butt. Of course. <laughs> um, 
Boston Root was a very weird, uh, it was a TV series, um, and it was basically um, uh, beer pong. It was like oh, a yeah, beer, I know beer pong, pong sure. championship. Um, it's like playing ping pong with beer bottles. And, and that was yeah. in Boston okay. um, at world, what is it, world's greatest restaurant, Boston's greatest sure, restaurant. I think you mean best, Boston's greatest bar, perhaps? Something like that. It's three yeah. stories. Oh, three stories. Well, I don't yeah, know, but I, I know the, the greatest bar. That's on that's on the, on the West End, which used to be the North End. Yeah, yeah. And well, then, that that was. Yeah. Well, you know what? When the Red Sox broke the curse, the first scene, the first thing you saw in, from from the flash out the from the shot out to Boston and from St. Louis was was people celebrating at the greatest bar. Yeah, that, I think that's that's, I think that's, that's maybe where called. it was, but I don't know. I mean, that sounds like it could have been. Yeah, but the, the deal was that we were supposed to go in there, set up, and just take one of the floors for three days. Okay. But the owner was like, no, I want everything out of here at the end of every day, which was an enormous task. I'm sure. To, to set up everything, so. So that, yeah. meant everybody, that meant the cast members had to, had to work and lug in too, right? Yep. Wow. Yep. And then we had a, a girl um, who's a friend of mine who was doing the interviews. Okay. And. Uh, would, it, would it be for Dirty Water TV by any chance? I, I don't know where it ended up. This well, is I'm just one thinking the, the kind of interviews saw. might be on Dirty Water TV because they do a lot of they do a lot of interviews at the Greatest Bar and they do you know they they, they go out to Bo the Boston scene all the time. Yeah, she actually got one of the um, the uh, players to to start talking about his grandfather and he just he just lost it. You're you talking know, about like, one of the Patriots or the Red Sox? No, one of the the players oh. in in Boston Root. Oh, okay. The okay the music yeah. music. No, no. But one of the actors, it's, you mean? It's, you know, it's beer pong, basically. Oh, all the players. Yeah, I don't oh, want to call him an athlete, oh, 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 you know. Okay, it's like, how much you. athletic prowess does it take to throw a ping pong no, ball into well, a beer? Well, I mean, it depends. <laughs> depends on, depends on the, how the gravity's yeah. falling that night. But she got people to open up. Okay. You know, almost too much. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, go on. What else you got there? Cigarettes and scandals. Okay. Um, that was a weird one where there are murders going on of uh, prostitutes. Oh, that's terrible. And... Um, as it turns out, <coughs> it's actually the uh, ch chief of police and the uh, uh, his assistant that are the perpetrators. Wow! So, and I can remember going to uh, to Lowe's to get, you know, this was just, uh, they played this abduction at Lowe's? materials. Well, we, what, are you talking about the store Lowe's? I'm thinking of the theater of the Lowe's. No, no, that we needed we needed things to abduct people. Oh so my goodness! I, I, I go in. Oh, I know. And I say, equipment like duct tape. Yeah, and yeah, and and so the rope. the store clerk is like, oh, we have this, you know, nylon rope over here, and I'm thinking, no, 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 no self-respecting abductor is going to use anything but straight up hemp rope. So okay. exactly. How many yeah. how many people uh, how many feet does it take to abduct somebody? The answer is 25. There you go. I never knew that, but I believe <laughs> you. Okay. By so, the way, did you ever work with a guy named Stephen Lee Day in New Hampshire? Very great filmmaker. He very he uses a low budget. I, he and I and, a, and this woman who used to be also from New Hampshire, Karen Colgill, three years ago, he wrote the script. That it was a gangster film. He killed us both in the film. And we, we did it in room 317 at the Hampton Inn in Nashua, New Hampshire on May 1st of 2015 Ooh, for like three hours. Good. And, he, and he, he got everyone up there. He, he snuck everything up into the room without get you know you know without having to do you know do anything legal with the copyright of the Hampton Inn because really you're not supposed to do that you're not supposed to unless yeah. you have a copyright uh, clearance from the from the headquarters yeah so he did it and then he cleaned up the room with all the fake blood it was a beautiful thing to watch him clean it up I didn't have to do any of that I just had to play like I'd been shot to death and it was fun you know as it can be of course. Yeah, yeah. No, we've had a couple places where we're, we are no longer invited back to. Yeah, well, I, yeah. I don't know if it wasn't that we. I don't think we didn't get kicked out. That's the important thing. And he treated us to dinner afterwards too. Nice. And Batucci's across the way. Yeah. So, yeah, I like Batucci's. Right. Go on. What else you got there? Uh, uh let's see. <clears throat> uh, perfect. The perfect woman was uh, was a uh, film short that Chase Bailey. Okay. Put together. Okay. And. Um, as it's going on, you start to realize that this this uh, woman is is not uh, um, Morgana. Okay, uh, is her name Ekins, um, Ekins, um, I think. And she uh, is a cyborg, basically. Oh, They're trying to invent the perfect woman. Okay, uh, but she's got some some flaws. All right. Um, and uh, it's it's actually it was well shot, but it, it, a lot of people thought it was a little bit. Um, uh, degrading, um, but 
I thought that the, the dialogue was very good. Um, okay. And Morgana, oh my word, poor girl. I mean, she just had to play this, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in a nighty. Okay. Uh, and she was just sick as could be. She just had the flu. It was oh, horrible. Oh, terrible. Yeah, and yet she had to come off as, as sexy. And, you know, between takes, she was like... <laughs> well, believe it or not, we actually got... We're less than five minutes away from the conclusion of the show. Oh, well... I know, I couldn't believe it either. The, I just watching the clock. Now, very quickly, you do you want to play like a, like a song, maybe a 30-second song with your guitar before we wrap it up, and then I can also... I'm sorry about that. I didn't realize that we were... But we started a little before five, and now it's like five thirty-two. Oh, all right. Five twenty-seven. Um, well, let's see. There, there's one more oh, that well, I thought was was. Um, well, you got to mention that. This this isn't a, uh, a complete list either. Okay. Um, losing it was one. Okay. It was uh, you know a short, ill-fated Casey at the bat. I've just it was something a friend of mine does. Okay. Um, um, for kids, um, it goes out out to the school. Um, and then there was another one, Tech Roulette, where we got into Seacoast uh, Media. Uh, company and took over an entire floor. Okay. And it got into like Nerf Wars. It's basically some guy in, you know, trying to get tech support. Okay. And uh, he can't. He ends up with these two guys who are pretending to be from India. Okay. And they're messing with him. Wow. And uh, yeah, that, we, leave it to them to do that. After the Nerf War, uh, they, they watched the surveillance cameras. Okay. Uh, and we were not invited back to. Seacoast Media Group. <laughs> okay, but you, 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 you found your calling, I say. Listen, here's what I propose we do. You're pretty good with that guitar. Why don't you accompany my music with your guitar as we, when we wrap it up? You okay with that? And anything we you want to add something like a PSA uh, later, what, we can do that. What key it's in. But, All right. Well, so, folks, well, he's, he's going to accompany me on, the, on his guitar for my Topic Time theme music. Great show tonight, as usual. And watch it again. See you guys again next time. Take care. Here we go. That's it.